Hi friends, it's me, Mrs. Nicholas. We don't have any more holidays coming up, but we do have something really big and really fun coming up soon. That is summer vacation, woohoo! So I chose a few summer books to read to get us in the mood. Our first book is The Great White Man-Eating Shark and it's written by Margaret Mayhe and illustrated by Jonathan Allen. Let's check it out. There was once a boy called Norvin who was a good actor, but rather plain. In fact, he looked very like a shark. He had small sharkish eyes, a pointed sharkish head, and sharp sharkish-like teeth. Unfortunately, there are not many plays written with good parts for sharks, so Norvin took up swimming instead. He soon became a good swimmer and learned to shoot through the water like a silver arrow. Norvin lived near a wonderful beach called Carmel Cove, but he had to share it with lots of other swimmers. When Norvin tried shooting through the water like a silver arrow, the other swimmers got in his way. This made him cross and resentful. What's the use of being able to shoot through the water like a silver arrow if everyone gets in my way, he thought. So he came up with a wicked plan. Out of plastic, he made himself the dorsal fin of a great white man-eating shark. Then he strolled around the headland, thought a few sharkish thoughts, strapped it on, and slid into the clear blue water. Mrs. Scorpio, who ran the bakery, was bobbing harmlessly up and down in the waves when suddenly she saw the dorsal fin of a great white man-eating shark heading straight for her. If you're swimming and you see a great white man-eating shark heading straight for you, the thing to do is to leave the water in a quiet and dignified way. But Mrs. Scorpio did not know this. Shark! Shark! She yelled and flung herself into the sand, kicking and screaming with terror. What a panic there was! Up and down Carmel Cove, people grabbed up their children, their dogs, and inflatable canoes. Within moments, the sand was crowded with dripping bodies and the sea was completely empty. Everyone stared despairingly at the cruising dorsal fin. Many people thought they could just make out the shape of a great white man-eating shark cutting through the water beneath it. Norvin wore the expression of a great white man-eating shark always wears when it's hungry. And his acting was so good that even when he came up to breathe, People were convinced he was actually looking for prey. It was a very hot day, but nobody dared go swimming again. Norvin had the whole of Carmel Cove to himself. He spent all afternoon shooting backwards and forwards like a silver arrow. Everyone else watched enviously, sighing and rubbing suntan lotion onto one another. No one dared to share the sea with a great white man-eating shark. At last, Norvin swam out around the headland and vanished from sight. After that, everyone except Norvin was too scared to go swimming at Carmel Cove. Norvin, come out at once, his friends all cried. There is a great white man-eating shark hanging around these parts. Norvin laughed. Nonsense, he said. It's probably only a whale shark or even a basking shark. And they're vegetarians, you know. Norvin had the entire beach to himself for three whole days. However, soon a few brave people, tired of seeing Norvin shooting to and fro like a silver arrow, started swimming again. Others joined them and soon everyone was splashing around happily once more, enjoying the swimming and the summer. But Norvin had grown used to having the beach to himself. He strolled around the headland, put on his dorsal fin, and swam back into Carmel Cove. Mr. Dorsey, the plumber, was showing his little boy Courtney how to stand on his head in the water, something a plumber sometimes has to do. Suddenly, he found himself nose to nose with Norvin. He did not recognize Norvin, of course. He thought he was nose to nose with a great white man-eating shark. If you do find yourself nose to nose with a shark, the thing to do is leave the water quietly, just as if your only thought was to rub more in more suntan lotion. Mr. Dorsey did not know this. Shark! Shark! He yelled. Grabbing up Courtney, he flung himself onto the sand, kicking and screaming in terror. Within minutes, Norvin had the beach all to himself once more. 
No one dared go swimming for a week at Carmel Cove. No one except Norvin, that is. He shot to and fro like a silver arrow, while others watched longingly from the beach. Soon they could stand it no longer. A few brave people decided to take a risk, and Carmel Cove was once more splashing and bubbling with happy swimmers. Norvin, however, was becoming greedy. He wanted Carmel Cove all to himself, all the time. So he strolled around the headland and put on the dorsal fin once more. Then he swam back to Carmel Cove, laughing to himself as he thought of all the terror he would cause. But suddenly, he felt he was not alone. Someone was swimming beside him. Who could it be? He looked out of the corner of his eye. There, nuzzling up to him, was a great white man-eating shark, a female. Norvin was such a good actor, she did not realize he was merely pretending to be a shark. She gave him a very loving glance. You are the shark of my dreams, she said. Marry me at once or I shall lose my temper and bite you. He shot like a silver arrow, dorsal fin and all, toward the beach and flung himself onto the sand where he lay, kicking and screaming with terror. Everyone could see at a glance just what Norvin had been up to. The people of Carmel Cove put up a shark net across the mouth of the bay. But for the rest of the summer, Norvin sat on the beach, watching other swimmers shoot backwards and forwards like silver arrows. He had had such a terrible shock that, shark net or not, he was too frightened to go swimming for a long, long time. Though he was a plain boy, he had made a rather good-looking shark, and I think he was very wise not to take any dangerous chances. So that's the story of the great white man-eating shark. Thanks for joining me, friends.